What's going on, everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash, and today is October 12th of 2018. Well, folks, I hope you are having a wonderful day. Today, we've got all types of different things to talk about here on the Daily Update. It is no understatement by any means that there is a lot going on in both cryptocurrency as well as traditional markets, predominantly in U.S. equities. Whether it be crypto over the past few hours or stocks over the past week, we have seen a bloodbath across the board with Bitcoin going down a few hundred dollars over the past 24 to 48 hours, as well as stocks going down a whopping 8 to 10% depending on what indices you're looking at. So I have a lot of people who have been asking me recently, you know, Nick, is this going to continue across the board in both stocks and crypto? And what am I currently watching? So we're going to be diving into all of this today, guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at crypto markets. So really over the past 24 hours, things have been relatively neutral. Uh, more players are in the red at the moment. As we can see, a few players are up in the green. However, most uh, players are really going sideways with some going even further down with a lack of confidence showing in Bitcoin at the moment. However, Bitcoin has been able to hold over the past few hours, really over the past 20 24 hours from the crazy dip we saw back uh, the other day. And with this, it has left market cap valuations uh, quite stagnant, uh, about a $20 billion drop from when we saw Bitcoin deplete the other day. But again, I, I really want to emphasize, as I'm going to throughout this video, guys, that uh, this was kind of, you know, not it not so much expected i think a lot of us were expecting bitcoin to pop up seeing as we were pushing towards the upper band resistance but we hadn't officially uh broken out we hadn't had a good five percent bump upwards so this was still a possibility and we're still holding within the wedge we haven't even revisited six thousand which is again why i don't want to emphasize this too much and I'll, I'll mention why it's not so much of a big deal at the moment so going on here to market dominance, again, still holding up in the upper band. This is reminding me a lot of uh, what we saw in December in regards to altcoins to Bitcoin. I'll go ahead and expand that out again. Some very volatile periods of dominance here where, again, we had Bitcoin dominance deplete from 57 down to 51% uh, just a few weeks ago. But again, we can see that dominance come right back up as we see altcoins possibly double bottom or, or test for a double bottom in regards to their valuations comparative to Bitcoin. This has happened in the past. It happened with a lot of altcoins. Ergo, why we saw Bitcoin dominance come right back up back in December. But if we can see that hold, if we don't see Bitcoin dominance come past that, that could be a very good confirmation sign that markets are on an, a risk on factor, meaning that, again, altcoins are double bottoming, buyers are coming in back at those lows, which means that overall crypto markets are going to increase. And I would bet Bitcoin is going to be um, one of those alt those cryptocurrencies leading. But again, altcoins tend to move faster to the upside and to the downside. So good thing to observe here, good thing to focus on. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely what we should look for, again, as we've seen when Bitcoin dominance uh, uh, double bottomed over here, again, we could see it continue on for months on end, uh, meaning that it was going to be a sign for a continued bear market. All right, so enough rambling on that. I want to focus in here, guys, on Bitcoin for a moment. Now, many people are obviously concerned with the recent price drop that uh, we're, we're going to go to 5K and, you know, Bitcoin's uh, you know, just absolutely going to continue this bear market. There's no end in sight. Look, the fact of the matter as to why I'm not really freaking out is, again, as we've been talking about on the channel, guys, and this is something I really want to emphasize, I want to teach you guys more than anything rather than telling you, oh, Bitcoin's going to go to X level. Uh, here's the thing about Bitcoin at this moment. It is still within what I call the twilight zone. It's going sideways. There's no trend right now. Uh, and it's very imperative for us not to get eager or try to beat out um, you know, the market in regards to trying to deter determine what kind of trend it's going to take. Right now, this market is, is very low volume. And even if we do pick a direction, uh, it, it is very important to make sure that there's volume behind that direction because right now there's not many, uh, there's not much trading going on in the market. And I can emphasize this. There's a really big issue right now. Not already, not only are we already in a low liquidity market um, in regards to cryptocurrencies, but along with that as well, the mass majority of volume here is happening on a paper, uh, really a paper exchange. It's happening on a derivatives based exchange, Bitmax. We've been talking about this. Uh, now, I cannot emphasize enough, and I tweeted about this the other day, and I think I've been talking about it really for the past few months, but there is a very, very big issue in regards to a market where more than half of the volume of its leading currency is being traded 
on a derivatives exchange that is based off of the underlying price. Let me repeat that. There is a big, big issue. When you have this kind of divergence between Bitfinex and GDAX, some of the largest exchanges for cryptocurrencies, comparative to a derivatives exchange. Now, if any of you are wondering if that volume statistic is true or not for BitMEX, it is. I, I'm not going to deny it. Look, I, I, you know, for example, CoinMarketCap has the two stars here. And usually when you see that, it's usually because a lot of these exchanges aren't really processing the volume they're claiming. I 100% believe that BitMEX is really training this volume. And the reason I say that is because people have gotten swindled into uh, using derivative-based exchanges that provide leverage, and everyone's gotten very eager to get those kinds of gains that they got back in December. It's human psychology. And it's been a very popular choice for people in China and Asia. So I just want to really emphasize that here. I'm sorry to kind of go on a ramble here, but I think it's very important to really understand that there's a big issue here that we have to wait until we get some serious liquidity on the actual underlying base fiat pair exchanges between the USD. So again, I'm going to emphasize that to its core. But I want to, again, go to the TA side of things here, guys. And again, not only emphasize my point on volume, but the fact that we are still holding on this increasing uh, line of support here in regards to this uh, more kind of uh, longer term trend here back since June. We've been making higher lows every time. And this is a signal of confidence in my mind. I think it's something we have to factor just as equal as the resistance up here. It shows that we're still in quite a neutral trend here, and we have to see whether or not the market is going to pick direction or that we're going to get some actual volume in this market. Right now, we are not seeing volume. Look at the weekly, guys. We're back below where we were in July. Now, that could be a concern for many uh, bulls out there, but at the same time, until we pick a trend, until we break below 6K, I don't really think that's much of a concern. Uh, volume could just be slowly tethering off until, again, we see a trend in the market, until some big buyers or big sellers come in. So we're going to have to wait patiently for that. Again, it's about patience in regards to markets. I can't emphasize simple things like that enough, guys. Patience is key in this market. So you know, who knows? Again, we might be pushing sideways until we get support on something like the uh, the 100 week here that's coming up here very close. You know, We might have to wait for something like that. Or again, we might make a move here in the next few days. Time will tell. Again, so long as we're in this wedge, we will not be making a serious move. Until we get out of this, uh, I, I'm not going to be making any decisive decision on where I think the market's going to be going. All right. As much as I would like to see it moon to all new highs and stuff like that. we got to be patient. All right. So I'm going to go on here to talk a little bit about Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum right now obviously had the exact same thing uh, in regards to Bitcoin. It had quite a steady drop, but Ethereum had an even sharper drop. And I'll go ahead and turn off the moving averages here uh, just so we can get a little bit, little bit more clear price action. Ethereum broke through a wedge that many bulls were hoping it would break out of to the upside, but had a opposite effect. Now, I want to spend some time to talk about where I expect this to go. Seeing as we've already had such a stark drop and we broke out of this wedge, it's a matter of this coming down to the $170 range here and finding double bottom support. Okay, this is the same with a lot of other altcoins across the board. Um, XRP USD, I think you need this to come back down. You're going to hopefully see this come back down to around 27 cents. If it does that, Again, very good sign for altcoins. I think we're seeing a very similar repeat as we talked about um, with market dominance here with Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin's going to probably come up. There's going to be a little bit more of a bloodbath for altcoins. And from there, we could very well see a continued uptrend in altcoins. Uh, I'll keep going across the list here with uh, Litecoin, for example. I think Litecoin needs to hold down at these lows around $50. Again, not much of a depletion here for Litecoin left. But again, I would hope to see it come back down to this range and actually triple bottom here, which would be an even better sign uh, in regards to uh, long term stability for altcoins. And again, make this pay base level here before really the November, December, January rally support for one of these larger altcoins. So that's what I'm looking for, guys. Again, we could look through a lot of these different protocols. Most of them are showing the exact same thing again. Um, we we'll take a look at uh, Cardano, and the reason I'm looking at the USD pairs here is because uh, this is good to look at in regards to the longer term cycles. But again, Cardano is doing the exact same thing, possibly testing down for a double bottom here. Um, I think Icon as well is one that you guys like to me, for me to check on from time to time. If you take a look here at Binance, 
Same exact thing. Looks like it's coming down to revisit and test down on this level that we saw back here around 44 cents. So, you know, we're not making any serious moves to the downside, nothing serious to the upside. It's a matter of waiting for that confirmed trend. And when we pick up that trend, whether it's to the upside or downside, we are going to very clearly get an understanding where this market's going. It's going to be much easier to either make money to the long side or for those of you who are trading on BitMEX, which I don't do personally, uh, trading to the short side. You got to determine whether or not you want to trade on BitMEX for yourself. But there's a lot of whales who are dictating the price right now because there's no liquidity in this market. So don't get burnt. Don't get liquidated. And don't trade with ridiculous levels of margin, guys. That's the only financial advice I'm going to give you. Margin is a tool you need to use properly, okay? Just want to emphasize that because I've heard some really bad stories about liquidations as a recent and people losing a lot of their money. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and talk about stocks here. Now that we've got a good summary on crypto, we're still waiting for a trend. There has been uh, a lot of media buzz, as there always is when the market goes down. And it's so funny because the, uh, the media can't stop talking about how great the market is doing and all oh, the stocks just keep going up and it's tied to this or it's tied to that. And now they come out screaming that it's October phobia or, you know, whatever buzzword they can come up with. And I just got to say, you know, this kind of stuff is why I don't read mainstream media content most of the time. And if you do have to pick up a mainstream media piece, I would say to focus on one that actually has a good track record and writes quite well, and not CNBC or, or Jim Cramer for that matter. I would be talking more than anything about Bloomberg. Bloomberg actually has some authors that are focusing in on what might be actually causing this. Something we talked about weeks ago, back in September, uh, late September more specifically. The fact that we are in the buyback blackout period. We talked about this weeks ago, back in September, how with the S&P coming up on a period where 80, I think it was like 86% of the companies wouldn't be allowed to buy back their own stock, that this would cause a big shift in supply and demand side uh, concepts in regards to markets, right? You know, if you have less demand coming in and you have an oversupply of sellers supplying uh, shares in the market, selling on the market, you can get a pretty big difference in price. And seeing as stock buybacks have been the big thing pushing up this market, it's not a big, uh, you know, big surprise here. Again, when we talked about this, yeah, back in September, uh, so again, very key to look ahead at these kind of things, guys, to understand what's keeping up markets and then what's also knocking it down. So this is the big explanation, I think, in my opinion. Might not be the only factor, might be just generally people selling off and causing a domino effect, but this is a massive reason why we're seeing a depletion here. And it shows just how vulnerable this market is when the stock buybacks run out. Now, I want to go ahead and talk about equities here. I think a lot of people are curious, is is this the final, you know, you know, run up in markets? Are we finally starting to see a serious recession uh, start to play out, or at least the, the market set up for a recession? Look, I, I don't think it's going to be like many people expect. As much as we've seen a very big correction here, guys, I think we could be very well setting up for a, a longer term recession, but I'm not going to speak too soon. Not only are our market futures uh, signaling a little bit up this morning uh, for pre-market trading, it's about 6.24 a.m. at the moment right now. So we'll have to see what happens when markets start actually trading. Now, this has been the biggest sell-off, uh, biggest point-based sell-off that we've seen in a very, very long period of time. But on a percentage basis, we've not only seen this before, um, you know, back earlier this year, but also back in 2015. The, the thing I want to drill in here as a point to answer that big question of a market recession, guys, whether or not we're stepping into a market recession, as much as I am more likely to believe that that's the case, is that this isn't just going to keep going down, 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 down. Uh, market recessions take time. And I think what you're going to probably see is an attempt to get above the 200-day moving average. And if we can't do that, we're going to continue to see quite a sharp decline. And then over time, things are going to stay choppy. And we're going to see U.S. equities probably go in for a nice, uh, you know, short-term recession, I think, in that case. It's not going to be exactly like 2008. And it doesn't have to be so dramatic in that sense. But we're going to see, again, a lot of these fits of serious sell-side activity when stock buybacks can't provide support in the market, right? That's been the big thing propping this market up. But in the grand scheme of things as well, I think we should take some perspective, as much as I'm bare. I mean, guys, it's just, you know, again, this isn't the end-all sell-off of the world. You know, equities have still provided, actually, sorry, let me get the full view here, has provided quite well since 2008, all right? So, 
we have to understand though that this is quite a, a steady sell-off. And I think it's a matter of seeing this come down to one of the weekly moving averages in the grand scheme of things. And I think more than anything, you know, you've got a really good period here since 2016 where stocks have been really picking up the rally uh, from all the, the sideways action that we saw in 2015. So maybe we might see this come down to the 200 week, which would be a very nice pullback for equities and be very healthy. If we can get something like that, I actually would feel comfortable with the idea that equities could go on for a little bit longer after we've reached that level. But who knows, this could be the start of something larger. My whole belief on a macro level is that U.S. equities, uh, as much as they could be set in for a short-term pullback, are going to continue relatively outperforming that of emerging markets because what we're seeing is a mixture of currency crises and debt cycles across the world and other economies, and a lot of money flowing into the U.S., not only to flee from that, but also due to the recent tax changes in the United States, what's known as repatriation, where trillions of dollars has flown back to the United States due to the tax cuts as a recent. And this causes a perfect storm where you're basically going to be seeing, as uh, many people like uh, uh, Ray DeLeo and a lot of other people have been talking about that I follow, uh, is generally that you're going to see a continuation of this in emerging markets. It's going to scale from smaller to medium to larger economies. And then it's going to most likely hit the eurozone as we've continued to see the eurozone go through a lot of issues, whether it be through the currency itself or through the geopolitical issues in Italy and Greece and all types of different areas. And then finally, to the United States eventually. And again, this is a multi-year trend, all right? So we'll, we'll talk about this more in a future video. I hate to ramble and, and bore you guys to death. But again, we talked about this. Uh, again, I want to emphasize this not only with stock buybacks, but we've been talking about how the VIX was well overdue for a, um, a very big spike. Not to mention, we talked about how the VIX was holding a base around 9.5, but it started to really build a base around 12. And that starts to show that you know, investors are a little bit shaky, a little bit concerned something might be coming up or that markets just might be overextended. I can say for sure, though, I'm not going to be touching the FANG stocks. I'm not going to be touching things that have been overvalued for quite some time. I think they're going to be really what drags the market down. What am I looking to play here? I'm looking to play commodities. I'm looking to play things like URA, for example. URA is coming back down Pre-market is showing that it's going to be trading right down at the bottom of this wedge here, guys. And we've seen every time that it comes down here, it bounces right back up. Not telling you to buy it or anything, but I am definitely looking at it and eyeing it for a potential trade. But again, play those things that are cheap in this market. It's very hard to find a bargain in this market. And that's what you want to look for at these uh, types of, uh, you know, types of trades. You want to find discounts in the market when things pull back. And last but not least, again, going towards the macro trend of thing, got to bring this article up again to focus back on that macro piece that I'm talking about, to focus on the emerging markets. Zimbabwe is close to potentially stepping back into another spur of hyperinflation. So again, this is going back to exactly what we've been talking about, the Venezuelas, the Argentinas, the Turkeys. Um, you know, and I think we're going to see this as well in, in, in Zimbabwe. And we've been seeing the geopolitical issues arising, uh, which has led to a currency crisis for uh, South Africa. It's starting off in the smaller economies, and it's going to get to the mid-sized economies and the larger ones. So we'll we'll keep on talking about this, guys. As you all know, if, if you keep coming back, guys, I'm going to keep rambling. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I get on your nerves sometimes, but I'm glad you guys uh, stick around and, and you enjoy some of this longer commentary. I know it gets dragged out sometimes, but you got to do that. You got to do that to get the extra details and you know start you know getting the mind thinking about all these different things. It's a lot to take in. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it as always. And if you guys have anything that I didn't cover in the video, please leave it down in the comments down below or any questions, comments, or concerns. I'll try to get back to you as, as much as I can. But until the next video, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay tuned.